Hey people, Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. I've been very patiently waiting my time to make this video. What am I talking about? Canada now is going to decide to ban foreign investors for two years. Why? Well, because the current administration has pretty much two years left in their administration. They got to keep housing under wraps. They got to get locals into their own markets. Well, they can't because we sold out in 2010 during the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. The Vancouver model came out. Park your money in Canada. Go ahead. We'll disenfranchise our middle class in 2010. The city of Vancouver was headed for a market correction in housing. Why? How do I know this? Because I lived there. Everything was empty. Apartments empty, completely half empty apartments. Entire streets completely empty of where kids would be playing hockey and, and barbecuing and having fun and people would be sitting on steps. Empty. Well, what's happened? Well, we sold out a long time ago, but now they want to do a two-year thing? Let's take a look at what's going on. And I'll, and I'll show you guys what we've been talking about for the last 10 years and why I've been heavily shadow banned on this channel. So there it is. Canada's banning some foreigners from buying property after home prices surged. So why is this coming out in January 1st, 2023? So there it is. Um... Took effect January 1st, essentially bans uh, uh, foreign home buyers from buying residential properties as investments for two years. So when you got two years left in your administration, you're obviously going to try and slow it down. Will Canada's ban on foreign home buyers make housing more affordable? Some experts have doubts. Again, there's just too much money in this bubble right now as we are speaking. We're on a bubble, on a bubble, on a bubble, on a cruise, on a sail ship in the middle of the Gibraltar. On a stock of cards on top of the bubble. That's how bad it's gotten in Canada. America saw a little sniff of correction back in 07 and 08. While Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK watched and just started selling out to foreign investors. And that's what's destroyed our middle class. So there it is. They're asking, so could this work? And But many real estate and housing policy experts are unconvinced that the two-year ban will have much impact on house prices. And I, I, I trust them on this one because that's pretty much it. So Toronto needs more money laundering. Vancouver model. Home prices slip down. Inflation. Five years. So this is the, the Toronto model. And the Toronto model is something that was out... And Chinese gangs laundering money and shadow flipping destroying Canadians' futures. My opinion, the Commonwealth is under attack by tons of money laundering and it's displacing young families in New Zealand, Canada, Australia, the UK, and American blue states. So there it is. The Vancouver model is hard at work. Launder your money. Park your money in Canada. Two gas stations in Vancouver sold for redevelopment money laundering. And the, and the condos they built there? Like two tenants living in the whole condo. Because it's all foreign investors and it's all empty. Woo! So what's going down? Lots is going down. So let's start breaking it down here. So Canada would be in a recession without money laundering. So governments already knew. And governments actually had an uh, FBI, uh, not an FBI, but a Royal Canadian Mountie Police Task Force to investigate the money laundering. But what happened to that? So here it is. We talked about it back two years ago. RCMB shutting down financial crimes unit. And they basically, yeah, it was beyond anything that anybody could imagine that investigated money laundering. And it is beyond anything else. So here it is. Canadian cities have not see, have seen up to one in eight newly built homes go to non-residents. So there it is. One in eight newly built homes. And Canadian real estate has long been a safe place for global investors to park cash low low uh, scrutiny f uh, few barriers and a little to no data collection on on ownership again goes back to the Van vancouver model and they couldn't even get first-time home buyers in vancouver burnaby surrey and what's happening well new zealand did a foreign buyers tax and we made a video of course this is our channel we're searching across our time machine new zealand uh foreign buyers tax ban is working but that was three years ago New Zealand foreign buyers going soft four years ago. So foreign buying was starting to soften and it started to work. And it was it was a thing that they knew that they had to do in New Zealand because the New Zealand proper basically was selling out to the highest bidders. And then when you look at the money that's been coming into Canada and through our housing, how Chinese gangs launder drug money through Vancouver real estate. And this breaks it all down here and it actually shows you on a map. Where's the map? There was a big map here showing you how, look, I was stunned. Look at that right here. I was stunned. 
And it, it's so big, you guys have no idea. Criminal syndicates control chemical factories in China's booming uh, Gunhong province. This is all government controlled because you don't own a factory in China without the government knowing. Are, are shipping narcotics, including fentanyl, to Vancouver and washing the drug sales in British Columbia's casinos and high-priced real estate and transferring the laundered funds back to Chinese factories to repeat the deadly trade cycle on a, a global news investigation show. So there's global news, the real fake news, is actually reporting it. And what do we say? Look at this. Three years ago, $45 billion owned by foreign investors in Vancouver. Canadians to be extinct in Vancouver by 2023. There it is. If $45 billion in foreign-owned Metro Vancouver housing represents the tip of the iceberg, there it is right there. So what happened? Money laundering, destroying home... Home affordability in Canada, the worst in almost 30 years. Toronto's worst five years ago. It's getting that bad that a person working 72 hours a week at minimum wage can't afford a one-bedroom apartment. There you go. The Canadian dream is dead. And here he is, the great Canadian leader, telling people. First is helping people save. <laughs> to buy a home. <laughs> to buy a home. I thought he saved some money to buy food to buy a home. The second is... Focusing on housing supply. Can that's, a, that's a myth because you have too many empty homes across the country. There's too many empty homes that are owned by foreign investors that live them empty. So the supply and demand, here, let's go back to the channel. Here it is. We covered this again, too. We're covering everything. Look at this. Supply and demand myth in housing market, not factoring in empty home by foreign investors four years ago. My opinion, the concept of supply and demand is a basic economic principle that explains how the amount of a product or service available affects the price in general. So you guys can go see that for yourself and see Amerifornia. Look at that. So there it is right there. So let's go back here and see what he has to say here. The great leader. Make sure we're creating uh, more homes across the country. So we could ship them to China. The third is putting an end to the speculation that is driving up housing prices unnecessarily. What? The 10 years ago, in 2010 Olympics in Vancouver, when Vancouver was headed for a crash where the annual income, you need, it was 6.5 times your annual income to own anything in Vancouver with an upper average wage earner. Now it's like 36 times your annual income. They should have fixed this 10 years ago instead of laundering money. Who is fixing this problem? Well, here we go. That's our myth the video that we made. And who is fixing this problem? What did we cover here five years ago? China clamps down on banks moving currency overseas, parking money in middle class housing five years ago. We've been covering this from day one. And the amount of ridicule and, and, and hate I've got over all the last 10 years of covering and discussing this, the disappearing middle class in Canada and how we are selling out to the highest bidders. And now... With two years left in his term, he conveniently wants to ban it? Why? So we could go back and say, well, we try to protect Canadians' interests by, you should have protected it 10 years ago! And you know what? It's not even the foreign investing. If they stopped the money laundering right at the door and started confiscating people's money right at the door and putting in a better government task force to protect the local... I launder money? I'm on the front page of the news. I made an example across Canada of what a money launderer looks like. I do it. It's dealt with. A foreigner does it. It's okay. On Canadian soul, coming in and buying out our assets, our minds, our everything, our institutions, buying, buying and paying for our political leaders. And things are going bad now with Canada and China. And I think this prime minister is trying to figure out a way around something to win the people back, but it's not going to work because it should have been fixed 10 years ago. Because I could tell you 10 years ago, if I laundered money, I'd be still sitting in the jail cell today as an example for what would happen to Canadians. Anyways, too little, too late. The only people that tried to stop this were the actual mainland Chinese from stopping capital flows from leaving their own country because our comp our governments in New Zealand, the UK, England, whatever, Canada, blue states of America, we're greedy. Look at New York today. It's a complete abandonment. Look at California. Abandoned towers. Look at Toronto. Abandoned towers. And this all started with foreign investing in a frantic pace coming here and buying us out. If they only checked where the money came from and if it was from legal 
legal. And if they did the, what do you want to call it, the, the, uh, the immigration, like Canadians are treated going into America, vice versa, then we would have pretty much a very safe, sound, and no money laundered in our country. Look at here. Look at what we're talking about. Look, Toronto needs money laundering. Vancouver model home prices slip inflation. So there it is. Their Toronto housing on life support needs more money laundering. And they did. And if you type in on our channel, this is our channel here, by the way. This is uh, urgent. China suffers largest capital outflow five years ago. It's all being parked. So you go to our channel like this. And then you, let's say you want to type in Seattle. Watch this. See? Seattle real estate. Uh, major housing correction coming to America. Starting with Seattle, AmeriFornia, it's Wagons East. That, that's when Ford investors were coming in and buying. Uh, Seattle housing crisis, Chinese buying dries up. Working middle class has mass exodus out of state four years ago. Seattle needs more Chinese. Park your money here. We'll blame the tech workers. That's when they were blaming the tech workers for driving up the prices pretty much overnight. Seattle's disappearing middle class. Chinese to take over Seattle housing market. AmeriFornia is coming. Uh, uh, Vancouver foreign buyers tax is working. So they put the foreign buyers tax in Vancouver and everyone went to destroy Vancouver and Toronto. Um, so if you type in Seattle and Toronto on our channel, see Chinese housing wave tsunami hits Toronto as Seattle and Vancouver implements foreign buyers tax. So they try to stop this by putting in a, fo a foreign buyers tax, but, uh, it, it just, um, here, let me just see if I could type in frantic. I want to. I want to bring up my. I can't. I can't uh, read. So frantic. Let's see if that comes up. Canada's fleeting. Ah, uh, here, Toronto housing market. Chinese money has arrived in frantic pace. So that's when Toronto five years ago, where housing really started to go nuts. And look, Toronto implements foreign buyers tax. I wonder what that did to New York State when they did that. But if you keep. Um, Checking out my videos here, I got lots of stuff happening, and uh, uh, look at that buyer first time home buyer loans price boom in the GTA. Canada was basically exporting homes to foreign investors, period, and our governments allowed it, and that's why we have a very disenfranchised middle class. And now Canada's saying we're going to bring in three million immigrants to help this problem. What about the three million people here that don't have jobs and that are working seventy two hours just to buy food? 72 hours a week to buy food. Anyways, I'm rambling on. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of the channel all these years. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.